Hello fellow artists. This is Linda Riddle and it's a good time for art. We're exploring shapes today. You might be thinking, okay Linda, shapes are everywhere. What's to explore? But stick with me and I promise that soon you'll be thinking about shapes in a whole new way. I'm going to keep my intro brief today because I want to get to the fun part where we make art. I hope you have a great time. And if you do, please give this video a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. My goal is to be the art teacher you've always wanted to have. So let's get started. We'll be using scissors, paper, and glue today to create some amazing designs, both in black and white and in color. And if you think cut paper is just kids stuff, wait till I show you some gigantic cutouts that will totally blow your mind. These monumental cutouts were created by the French artist Henri Matisse. When you look at art on a screen, it's often hard to get an idea of the size, so I thought these images would help. I was lucky enough to see this show in New York a few years ago. It was breathtaking. Henri Matisse was one of the most important artists of the early 20th century. The vibrant colors and flowing lines of his paintings won him recognition as a leader in modern art. In his old age, he had serious health problems. He still wanted to make art, but he wasn't strong enough to paint. He decided to work with cut paper, and with the help of assistants, he was able to continue creating art and invented a whole new approach in the process. He started with white paper, which was then painted in various colors with gouache, an opaque watercolor paint. He then cut shapes from the painted paper and had his helpers pin the shapes to the wall in various arrangements. He called his technique drawing with scissors. Like his paintings, Matisse's cutouts were filled with color and energy. He simplified shapes from the world around him to create almost abstract compositions. This cutout represents a famous trapeze act at the circus. Matisse was inspired by nature and reduced people, plants, and animals to simple shapes. He made use of both positive and negative shapes in his cutouts. I'll explain more about that later. Matisse created this wall-sized cutout to bring his beloved garden into his bedroom. For his dining room, he created this giant cutout called the swimming pool. In this museum installation, you can see how he captured the weightless feeling of being immersed in water. This reminds me of the fun I had as a child, splashing around in the neighborhood pool on a hot summer day. This cutout was used as a model for a spectacular stained glass window. Matisse made art to the very end of his life. Even when he could only work from bed, he continued to create his unique and joyful masterpieces. Before we make our own cutouts, let's talk a moment about positive and negative shapes. Here's a fern from my garden. And you can see all the wonderful pointy shapes that are made by the leaves. But if we look at the areas around and between the leaves, we also see shapes. We call these shapes negative shapes. Most people pay attention to positive shapes, but artists give a lot of attention to negative shapes as well. Here's a little exercise I did once in a painting class. I had a lot of fun with the negative shapes on these bottom two paintings. When I was planning my composition, I chose to have the leaves 
and branch go off the edges of the picture plane. And that automatically created these wonderful negative shapes. These are some fun cut paper exercises for exploring positive and negative shapes. I promise they're not as difficult as they look. The ones on the top are done using one technique and the bottom ones are done in a different way. I started out with simple shapes of black paper and cut them apart. So I think of the black areas as the positive shapes and the white areas as the negative shapes. But if you slightly shift your point of view, the white areas could be positive shapes and the black areas negative shapes. It's all in how you look at it. I think it would be fun to frame these and hang them in a series. They kind of have a mid-century modern vibe. That makes perfect sense because the book where I got these ideas was published in 1959. First I'll show you how to make this kind of design. We'll be cutting a paper shape and moving the pieces apart a bit. I'll start with a square. I'm just cutting some simple shapes out. Now I'm matching up all the shapes to the place from which they were cut out. I'm essentially putting it together like a puzzle. I like to think of these designs kind of like a slow motion explosion with all the smaller shapes moving out from the center. There's only one rule. We'll use all the paper shapes we cut. We won't add any extra shapes or take any shapes away. I think I'm going to make this a little fancier and cut a couple of extra shapes. And I'll just shift them around until I get them where I like them and if I want to I can glue them down. Normally that's what I do, but this time I'm going to put them back in their little puzzle pieces because I'm going to show you a different technique. Now we'll be doing something like this, which I call a fold out, where we just fold the shapes out or flip them out from where they were cut. I'm just taking each shape and flipping it. You can see all the great negative shapes that I got there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a circle. I'm just cutting out some simple shapes. I like to try to kind of keep them in order. The fancier you make your design, the more important it is to keep your shapes in some sort of order so that you can easily fit your puzzle together. So I'm fitting in the pieces and then I'm just going to start slowly moving them apart a bit to make my little slow motion explosion happen. I'll just adjust it until I get it where I want it and then normally I would glue it down. Now I'm going to show you the fold out version. So I take each shape and just flip them around. This one always creates some fun negative shapes. And that's it. Here's one where I used color and I got a little fancier with my design. I went ahead and cut little triangular shapes out of a circle, but then I cut shapes out of some of those shapes. So I made kind of a double explosion. If you're a younger artist, or you just don't like to follow rules, you can approach this in a much more open-ended way. Just use random scraps of paper to create a collage.
pay attention to the negative shapes that show up between your paper scraps. You can do this in black and white or in color. Now I'm going to try to emulate Henri Matisse and do a small cutout composition. I'm using my garden as inspiration. So I've collected a few leaves and flowers to give me ideas. I don't want to copy these shapes, but instead to simplify them and suggest the feeling of the garden. Matisse used paper painted with opaque watercolor. So I painted some sheets of paper in multiple colors. You can certainly use colored construction paper if you want. I think I'll start by making some background shapes. There will be lots of trial and error involved. Some shapes will make it into the final product and others won't. I'm beginning to cut out the foliage now. I'm keeping the shapes very simple. I'm really beginning to understand what Matisse meant when he called this drawing with scissors. This is my finished garden cutout. I wanted the plants to look as though they were floating in the breeze rather than firmly rooted to the earth. In Matisse's cutouts, it seems as though gravity doesn't exist. I'm especially happy with the white negative shape created by the surrounding colored pieces of paper. It reminds me of a full moon coming over the horizon. So I'm calling this composition Moonrise in the Garden. I was so impressed with Matisse's room-sized cutouts that I had to try it myself. I cut the shapes from construction paper and attached them with little bits of rolled up painter's tape. This was the most fun I've had in a long time. I look forward to some stargazing in my living room. Thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to share your artwork with all of us at hashtag GoodTimeForArt. Next time, we'll explore using positive and negative shapes in drawing and painting. If you want to be sure that you never miss one of my videos, the best thing to do is subscribe. And also hit the little bell symbol so that you'll be notified whenever I release a new lesson. If you made it this far, you must have enjoyed this video, so please give it a like. That's all for today. But remember, it's always a good time for art. Mm -hmm.